Hey, welcome to the video. My name is Christopher Buell and I do non-emergency transportation sales. Today we are going to focus on the most important question there is, which is, is there money in non-emergency medical transportation? I'm not going to bury the lead. The answer is uh, yes and no. I've seen it both happen. I've seen people uh, make money and I've seen people lose money. And frankly, I've done both. And so uh, today I'm going to talk about Two different companies that um, I know personally and uh, it's a, it's an interesting story and I'm also going to be talking about my own story okay so this is going to be a tale of uh, two companies and um, one of them had come to me essentially as a student through my YouTube channel the other one uh, was already in business and they hired me so they were a client and um, it's it's a funny story because they both sort of came into my life at, you know, cl close to the exact same time. Both were in the same state and both kind of left me for different reasons at approximately the same time. OK, so the old company, they already had been established. They had already been in business and they responded to uh, one of my ads and hired me for sales. And I got a look at. Uh, at their operation and what they did and before they had come to me they they had been in business for i think about four years and during that entire time they had never made any money and they followed essentially the broker model and a lot of people that want to do non-emergency transportation also want to do the broker model they just think you know what the service is terrible so I know there's an opportunity there. I'll go out and I'll, I'll sign up with brokers and I'll be in business. And, you know, that does work. And it's also uh, something that I, I do not recommend that, that any company follow. And basically the broker model is they're going to give you a lot of runs. None of the runs pay any money. They may pay you. They may not. So again, this, 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 this creates a cycle of bad service. And I have in parentheses for good reason, where people don't understand that if you're making so little money, the, the, on per, per uh, patient, you have to stack it and you have to stack it with as many runs as you can possibly do. And you're doing dialysis runs and you're doing things that are going to naturally lead to having bad service. Because if you're doing a dialysis patient, they never get off the dialysis time uh, at when they're supposed to. I mean, if the bleeding doesn't stop, you're going to be delayed for could be 30 minutes, could be an hour. I mean, you don't even know. And that causes this domino effect of being late uh, for the rest, rest of the day. And... Um, this company had hired me to do uh, sales to get them some private pay business. And when the moment of truth came and people called and said, yeah, we want to hire you for, non, you know, for uh, a gurney run for a hospital or at eight o'clock at night, there was nobody available to do it. All the drivers were already exhausted. They had already worked a day. There was nothing in place for them to go capture the new business. And it just sort of became this cycle. And I see this, I see this in other businesses as well. I mean, they're too busy trying to service the uh, low paying broker work that they don't have uh, availability to go capture good high paying work. So they eventually they went under and it was, you know, it was one of these things that didn't matter. Didn't matter my advice. They, they, they were kind of trapped and I don't blame them. They were good to me and I would never say anything negative, but, um, but yeah, it was, it was not a successful business model. And by the way, this is the most popular business model that uh, non-emergency transportation companies do. Okay. Now, so let's, uh, let's discuss the new company. The uh, new company was a guy that, uh, was, was I think he was really my very first student. And uh, he, he contacted me off of the uh, YouTube channel. And he followed my business model almost perfectly. I mean, he started off with one van. And, you know, when, when he could, uh, 
when he had business, he drove, but when he didn't have business, he went out and hustled. When his first van was busy enough to hire a full-time driver, he hired the full-time driver and went out and bought a second van. And again, this he did this rinse and repeat, and it took him exactly one year, and he ended up uh, with four vans at the end of that one year. And, uh, you know, it's so funny because I have a little note here that says less is more. And he, he showed me, like, I have, uh, I have a four-hour window where I essentially, you know, keep, keep a guy available and I pay him to sit there. And, you know, I, I don't remember the exact number, but maybe 20% of the time, uh, he, he completely lost the money. He paid a guy to sit there for no reason. But the other 80% of the time, uh, he had a guy available for, uh, for hospital work and for, you know, last minute opportunity work. And he showed me that it was something along the lines of $20,000. I, I want to say it was $23,000 he had made in like one quarter, keeping, keeping the guy available there for, uh, to capture those, those hospital discharges. And uh, again, it was, it was very closely aligned with the way my business model worked. And, you know, my business model and this guy's business model, they do have drawbacks and I'm happy, I'm happy to discuss them. You know, it's a, you don't say no, you're available when, when somebody needs you. That If that's at two in the morning or eight o'clock at night or whenever you do it. But I think it's a, a much more profitable model. And speaking of me, the honest to God truth is that I never felt like uh, I had money. And um, it's a funny thing just because the way the business sort of takes over, you always have to have in the back of your head money like set aside to you know re replace something serious. I mean, there's always repairs and there's always another van I have to buy. And, you know, the business, it really takes you over when you're doing well um, and, and you, you spend your time, you know, again, managing the business, dealing with the uh, vehicles, dealing with the driver calling in sick, having to do collections. And you're doing all these things that kind of take away uh, from sales and growing the business. And uh, frankly, that's where I got the idea of, of doing what I'm doing now, offering myself as a freelancer to do sales for people that, you know, they're just too busy. And, um, you know, for me, again, when I was there in it, I never felt as though I had money. The money always came at the end. So with my first company, I had sold it for something like $250,000. And this is probably going back. I really don't even know if it's 10 years, if it's 15 years, it's going back a, a, a minute, but it was a tremendous amount of money uh, today. I mean, and so, yeah, back then it was a lot of money. And then all the receivables started coming in. You know, we had, there was always just so much money that was, was out and it was so hard to get people to pay you on time. But again, when, when, you know, you could have money, um, be owed a million dollars, but if it's, if it's in their pockets and not yours, you don't have any money. So in my personal case, uh, I never felt as though I had money until I sold the business. And then my second company, I, I ended up just shutting it down. And even that, the same thing, just due to the amount of receivables that you had outstanding, like, yeah, those, those were the times that it felt as though like, wow, there's a lot of money in this. Um, had I stuck it out, the, uh, I would have been successful. I mean, I really, I would have felt it. It would have, you know, eventually the nice cars and the fast women and all the good stuff would have come. But in my case, each one I have for about four years. And during those four year periods, the only time I ever felt as though I had money was at the end. Uh, but sticking it out, you know, it's, it's a funny thing because even with my silly little YouTube channel, I rarely make videos. And it always blows my mind how many times people still hit me up and they're still asking me for coaching or, or whatever, strictly off the, uh, just, just being available from a year ago. So by the way, if, if you see one of my videos, it means I'm still in business, you know, but I get messages every week, like, Hey, are you available for a call? Yeah, I'm still available. I still have my, uh, my, my, uh, 
uh, website up. There's uh, a lot of different uh, things available here. Keep in mind, I don't know if I'll ever get it fixed. It takes something ridiculous, like five to seven minutes to load. I might be exaggerating, but whatever. If you click on it, it's going to take a minute for it to uh, populate. I don't, I don't know how to correct that. But um, yeah, like I always say, drive fast, take chances. We'll see you next time.